G'day everyone and welcome to the Grand Court Parks webinar. I'm Izzy Hutchinson, the Grower Services Manager in the Southern Region. I'll be your host for this webinar this evening, which is being held in place of physical grower meetings at our parks, Red Bend, Warinia and Corrigal sites. 2020 has certainly been a big year for everyone. And while things haven't gone to plan, one positive has been the return of some decent rainfall across the East Coast. Whilst it's an exciting time for the industry, there is also a lot riding on this crop and we are not underestimating the importance of getting this crop off to generate some badly needed cash flow for rural communities. No doubt some of the topics discussed this afternoon will lead to further questions. You may have noticed that this session is equipped with a chat feature. I strongly encourage you to put forward any questions at any time and we will endeavour to answer these questions as we go. If we don't get to your question at the end, then you can expect to find call from an appropriate Grain Corp team member to discuss your query tomorrow at some stage. Given it's a busy time of the year, I will aim to wrap this up within the hour. So please understand that we may not be able to go into large detail on every site and every operation. To kick things, to kick off our presentation this afternoon, it gives me great pleasure to introduce you to our local site managers, some of which you may already know. Hi all, I'm Grant Jones, your site manager from Red Bend. I've been with the business for 10 years now. This year we'll be taking canola, barley, consisting of two grades, LA1 malt and bar one, and your usual wheat grades. Our opening hours will be from 7am to 11pm. I look forward to seeing you all back at site, ready for a good harvest. Thanks. Hi, my name is Nathan Sell. I've been with Grain Corp for 11 years. I've been the site manager of Parks Up for three years now. This harvest, we will be taking wheat, canola and barley. We will also be taking two milk grades of the trove and plant. We will have multiple drop-off points for our bunkers and our bin storages for better turnaround times. Staffing-wise, we will have we have six permanents. Josh Arrow is our TRC. Our recruitment numbers for casuals are looking good. We will be running two shifts at 18 hours a day, weather permitting, with the option of going 24 hours if we, if we need to. Looking forward to a busy harvest. And if you have any questions, just give me a call. Thanks. Hi, my name is Chelsea. I'm site manager at Caragal, Marinia. Um, been with Grain Cork for four years now. Um, looking forward to a decent harvest this year. Um, Caragal's taking all wheat grades and canola. My mobile is 0419-863-228. Looking forward to a good harvest. Thanks. Bye. Hopefully that provides you with an insight into who you may see on site this harvest. I now want to take the opportunity to speak to Nigel Lotz, our General Manager for Operations about Grain Corp. Good evening, Nigel. Thanks very much for joining us this evening. I'm just wondering if you can give us a brief update of what's been happening around Grain Corp over the past 12 months. Thanks, Izzy. Great to be on this uh, Parks Area Pre-Harvest webinar. This is certainly a, a sign of the times, uh, having a webinar rather than a face-to-face -face grower meeting. But from my point of view, I think it's actually quite an efficient way of getting some good information sharing happening. So, well done. Um, look, fantastic season. Uh, those of you in the parks area, certainly a, a, a dire difference to what it was last year. So, very exciting to drive out that way in the last couple of weeks on my trip to Dubbo to see plenty of uh, good-looking canola crops, wheat and barley looking fantastic. So, uh, very, very exciting. Um, for Grain Corp, it's a, a big difference as well. The last two years, we've spent a lot of time effectively being importers of grain from the West Coast over to the East Coast to satisfy the domestic demand. So it's going to be good to getting the supply chain the way it should be working. Just FYI, uh, we've already started harvest. Central Queensland is underway and north, parts of northern New South Wales. It's uh, trickling along. They're not as fortunate as you guys to have a, as, have a looking at having such a good season as you are having, but uh, everything's going to plan. Uh, what I thought I'd do now is just give a bit of an overview of what's happening at Grain Corp more generally and a bit of a focus on the harvest readiness. Uh, as Izzy said, there's a prompt for questions, so please use that and we can answer what we can today and uh, happy to do the others later. In terms of the wider Grain Corp, there's been a lot happening this year, uh, particularly on the corporate structure side of things. You may have seen press on the malt demerger uh, that was completed successfully in February of this year. 
what that means is the malt business, uh, which was a, a huge part of a, the Grain Corp business, uh, the fourth largest malt in the world, has been separately listed on the Australian Stock Exchange and trading in its own right. And that leaves Grain Corp comprising now of its processing facilities and, and the grain business. Also to note is our financial structure is very, very strong after this demerger. Uh, we have basically a zero core debt balance sheet, which for anyone in ag business is a very strong position to have, which is great. Also to note, we had our new CEO, Robert Spurway, start in March. Uh, this has been really good, challenging for him with COVID and, and him, you know, limiting him getting around to see the teams. But uh, he's been doing a great job in this challenging environment. Robert's background is he used to work with Fonterra out of New Zealand and previously Goodman Fielder. He's got a strong operating background, which I believe is great for an empathetic view to what makes the business tick. In terms of our harvest prep, uh, it's a big job we have each year. Our goal is to monetize your grain. Uh, we take this very seriously, and this is this it, it, um, compounds into the effort we put into our harvest preparation. There's five key areas we're focusing on. One is the communication, of which this webinar is part of. But our teams are out there talking to you as growers on both the commercial and operational side of things to ensure that we complement your supply chains. Uh, the next is setting up COVID-safe operations, which I'll go into a little detail later. Um, importantly, strategic capital projects, both of our digital platforms such as Crop Connect and our physical, including sites and mobile equipment and tarps. Always topical is our investment in our stackers. This year, again, we've put a significant investment into an additional 21 stackers and 10 high-capacity dogs to be commissioned later this year. Uh, the parks area, which is part of the Port Kembla zone, will also benefit from the you know, significant investment over the past few years in our regen rail loaders. Uh, maintenance is another important area we focus on. Like you as growers, it's really important for us to be ready for when the harvest trucks start rolling in. So a lot of effort goes into that. And finally, the Harvest Casual Recruitment Program, which a huge amount of effort's gone into and it's been quite successful. Uh, touching on COVID-19, uh, this has been an impost to us in terms of our supply chains, no doubt as it has been to you. But we've been dealing with this since March across all of our supply chains. That's across the grain, the processing and our oil supply chains. To date, our teams out and about have done a fantastic job and we've had no disruptions. And we expect to continue that on to harvest. It's our priority to keep you and your supply chains healthy and safe this harvest. As you've been doing in your normal day-to-day -day activities, just keep the social distancing practices at our sites. Our sites will be as contactless as possible. Uh, the team will run through some more detail of how that will affect you on a site and what to expect. But like always, if you've got a question, just funnel that back to our site manager for anything, please. Key to keeping our sites COVID safe uh, is our Crop Connect platform. Uh, and just note, for those that aren't digital uh, literate or IT literate, we have a 1800 gra grains number, and there will be one of our capable team members at the end of that to help you. Finally, couple this with our two-day payment terms, or industry-leading payment terms. Uh, we expect to give you a safe and efficient harvest operations. So thank you again on behalf of Grain Corp. Thank you for your time logging into this webinar and we look forward to partnering with you for a successful harvest. Thanks, Izzy. Thanks for that update, Nigel. We'll take a bit more of a deep dive into some of those topics that you've addressed at a later time in this webinar. But we have had a question come in from the audience. Are you able to give us an update on what's happening out at the Manildra site, please, Nigel? Yes, yeah, certainly, Izzy. Look, uh, just to give everyone an update on this, uh, we have sold our Manildra site to uh, Manildra. Um, it's just part of their expanse uh, and then expand their footprint at the Manildra site. Um, they ultimately are the natural owner of that site. Um, I would note, though, that Manildra have and continue to be a very important customer to us. They underwrite a lot of the strong pricing at our sites, which the, the grower, uh, which growers benefit from, and we don't expect any yeah, deficiency from a service point of view. If you have a particular issue, and I understand that it will protect, uh, will affect different people different ways, please contact uh, either myself or Tony Gallagher, who's the area manager on this call, to um, yeah, for us to work through your specific circumstances. Perfect. Thanks for that. For the remainder of this session, we have four of our very talented staff members on board to answer any of your questions. So we're structuring this like a Q&A or a panel type session. I encourage you to post all your questions into the chat section and we will endeavour to cover them all. The panel this evening includes Craig Cochran, our Senior Supply Chain Manager based in Geelong, Warwick Smith, our Regional Operations Manager for Southern, 
Tony Gallagher, our area manager for parks, and Phil Gay, the grain marketer for parks, Wylong and Cunningar clusters. The first question I'll throw across, across to Tony. We have heard from the site managers, which was great. Can you please recap what sites in the area will store malt and canola this coming harvest? Yes, thanks, Izzy, and good evening, everyone. Um, this year we'll be receiving malt barley at um, three of our four sites uh, and a feed variety as well. So Park Sub, they'll receive Latrobe barley and a planet seg there and also have a, a feed seg. Um, we'll go down to Red Bend. They'll have Latrobe as a malt and they'll also receive the feed. And uh, this year we'll also be receiving malt barley and feed barley at Warinia as a late grower request. So, yeah, that's a good change for the for the cluster. Um, just on the canola front, so we'll receive um, canola at Park Sub. We'll have um, a bin there plus a, a bunker storage there, so we'll have two drop-off points. Uh, Red Bend will have two bunker storages for canola and um, we'll also be receiving canola at Caracable in the D150 shed. Thanks, Izzy. Thanks for that, Tony. It's great to hear that we've been able to provide a solution there at Warinia for that extra malt grade. Now, worry, we've had, there's been a lot of media in regards to staffing and labour in the agriculture industry due to COVID. How has Grain Corp gone about recruiting staff for this harvest and how are we progressing with that? Yeah, thanks, Izzy, and evening to everyone. Um, look, the way I suppose Grain Corp we've gone about it is we've started very early like we normally do. We always know it's a a challenge to recruit the numbers we need and particularly in a large volume uh, year like we're going into, which is fantastic. Uh, we generally need a lot more numbers. So across the board though, uh, for the network, we're, we're tracking really, really well on recruitment. Uh, we've had over 5,500 applications uh, for harvest casual positions. We generally require uh, just a bit over 3,000 uh, for the entire network. Um, so obviously, yeah, lots and lots of applications. Obviously, not everyone um, ends up with a job, but uh, from a more regional based side of things, in southern New South Wales, we generally need around 800 uh, casuals to assist with the harvest, and we're tracking uh, really, really well. There's some labouring positions we're still trying to track down right at the moment, but we're confident uh, by the time harvest rolls around uh, that we'll have sufficient staff to, um, you know, provide the service uh, that that is required. Uh, going forward. Thanks, Izzy. That's great to hear that we've been able to attract some very talented people to our sites this year, Warwick. Tony, are you please able to provide some insight into how we're tracking in the parks area with our casual recruitment? Yeah, thanks, Izzy. So currently, as of today, our uh, recruitment statistics are sitting at 80% complete across the cluster. So um, if we break that down to site levels, we're looking at um, Park Sub Terminal is 100% complete with all positions filled. Red Bend is 100% complete with all positions filled. Um, we move down to Warinia. They're sitting at 90% complete. We're still looking for six casual labourers there. Um, and then we move to Caracabal, which we intend to run two shifts there. So to get, in, to get 100%, we're still looking for another 12 casual labourers. So I'm very confident by the end of, you know, the next fortnight we should see their numbers roll in because um, our goal is to try and get the two shifts at, um, at three of our, our sites and, and uh, we're in here to just run the, the 14 and a half hours. So, yeah, very comfortable with the numbers, but, um, yeah, just a little bit, little bit of work to do on some uh, labouring jobs to go yet. Yeah. Thanks, Is. Thanks, Tony. If the growers online know of anyone that might be suitable for those labouring jobs, please direct them to the Grand Court website www.graincorp.com.au and they can submit their application there. Craig, it sounds like we've got the recruitment under wraps and things are going quite well in that space. Can you give us an overview on how we're going with equipment to receive this large crop in southern New South Wales? Thanks, Izzy, and good evening all. Uh, I think that we can all agree that this crop has enormous potential, um, and as such, our teams have been planning since March, so earlier than ever before, to uh, to execute this harvest. I guess when you throw in on top of our normal planning and challenges for harvest, a uh, COVID pandemic, uh, it has really been a year that's been out of the box as far as planning goes. 
but we're very, very confident that we've got enough plans, pretty much A through Z, to execute the harvest as it comes up and do it safely. Supporting these plans, our business has spent a considerable amount of money, um, over $10 million in the last six months, on buying new tarps, 21 new stackers, and upgrading some new dogs uh, to 400 tonnes an hour. So to date, I think that, uh, yeah, we're in a really good position uh, planning-wise and equipment-wise. Um, and as Nigel said, the, the harvest already started in the north. So uh, I think that, yeah, we're all pretty confident that uh, what we've got planned is execute well. Uh, so we look forward to seeing the, uh, the crop in the south start to come off. Thanks for that, Craig. I think the burning question that we've had already from a lot of growers is in regards to what we're doing for COVID-19 and how we endeavour to keep our sites, our community and the growers that are delivering onto those sites safe. So I'm going to pass over to Warwick to give us an update on our COVID-19 plan. Thanks, Izzy. Uh, as Nigel mentioned at the start, obviously, uh, yeah, we've been working through COVID um, uh, situations since March, uh, obviously, with our outload program. So a revised delivery process across our East Coast network has been developed to reduce human contact allowing almost all delivery functions to be contact-free while maintaining our commitment to quality service. Grain Corp's advanced contact-free technology platforms, such as Fastway for grain sampling and receival, uh, for grain receival and Crop Connect, our digital transactions, are essential uh, to the revised plan, as are the changes to existing practices. The following processes are effective immediately at all Grain Corp receival sites this harvest. Uh, the first one is minimising movement of all Grain Corp staff and customers at all times. This includes, but not limits to, the access, no access inside our sample stands and way bridges. We are particularly aiming to minimise the movement of truck drivers on our sites. Social distancing and hygiene measures will be enforced as standard practice at all sites, along with all drivers and growers required to scan in via a QR code at the sample stand, and then again, uh, as the truck tears off at the Weybridge. The second point is the use of our updated delivery advice form. So our updated delivery uh, advice form will assist with reducing the contact between Grain Corp staff and our grower slash truck drivers. Also, this process will increase the efficiency of, at the sample stand. The delivery advice form must be used for every delivered load to the site and every sample to be tested. Samples will need to be provided Samples will need to be provided to Grain Corp in a Ziploc bags. We will test the sample and call you and, or call you or text you with the results. Please note the delivery advice will not be returned uh, after use. The third one uh, is, and it has been discussed already, no option to select cash or transfer grain to contracts at Sample Stand or Weybridge. All deliveries will be placed into warehousing and transferred via Crop Connect or the grower hotline 1800 Grains. We will still collect NGR, paddock details, treatment status and vendor decks at the sample stand or Weybridge and maintain active live prices at all our sites. The fourth one, no transfer of the clipboard around the site with drivers. Any paperwork required will not be handed back or signed. The size of the text on the paperwork will be increased to assist in reading from a distance. Thanks, Izzy. Thanks, Warwick. We've had a question come in from the audience, and it's that you've, you've mentioned there that we've got changes to the grower delivery ticket. The question is, can you please run through the delivery process at site from sample to tear off and how the changes to the delivery ticket have made it simpler for us this harvest? Yep, I sure can. So basically how it will change uh, is basically you'll come along um, whether it's, I might just run through easy the grower sample process first and then we'll do the, the truck delivery, if that's all right. Um, so the grower yep. sample, obviously, arrive at site. Um, we'll have a station at the bottom of the sample stand, whether it's a bucket or it's a some form of thing where the sample can be placed in. Uh, we, we would like, obviously, the delivery advice to be uh, in the sample bag as well. Our staff will grab that, test it, and as I said before, a text message or phone call will be sent to the person uh, hopefully soon after that with their results. With regards to a truck delivery, uh, obviously, same sort of process. You, 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 the truck will be sampled. Then they uh, 
put their uh, delivery advice either in a bucket or on a clipboard, uh, sorry, on a clip, which will be taken up to the sample stand and the, and the process will start. The truck will move forward. Uh, hopefully when the grower comes back, it shouldn't be too much time before they have um, their um, uh, receival docket. Obviously, we'll be asking the grower to do a uh, scan in uh, on the QR code at the sample stand as well. So we're, we're tracking who's coming and going from our site. Um, they will then proceed to the Weybridge. Uh, obviously show the uh, Weybridge person the sample docket. It doesn't have to be handed over because we've increased the font on the sample stands, which I'm sure we'll show a picture later on. Uh, and then from then, obviously process once they've been grossed onto uh, the required uh, hopper, uh, where again, they'll show the, show the document to the hopper attendant, which they can see as well, that they know they're in the right position, obviously discharge the load uh, and come back around to tear off uh, at, at the tear way bridge, obviously scan again on the QR to say that obviously you're leaving the site. Um, documents will be printed off though for the growers as well. So uh, the, obviously they'll have a copy of the receipt and their um, yeah, invoice, so to speak, of the receivable. Um, all, uh, also an added thing is that uh, once the truck, if you're obviously on Crop Connect and you've got the, uh, you, you want to have visibility on when trucks are leaving the site, um, you will get a uh, an alert coming through on your phone to say that the truck has left the site uh, with what quality it was and tonnage and things like that as well to keep uh, uh, the header driver or whoever it might be uh, in the loop. Very good. Thanks very much for that question, Chris. That's a um, that's a great question. The next thing I had that you've mentioned there, Warwick, was about the grower delivery advice. Can you give me an understanding of what this grower delivery advice is? and also where a grower might obtain that um, advice from. Yeah, sure, Izzy. Uh, basically, the, the delivery advice is obviously there to, uh, as I mentioned earlier, to remove that contact side of things. So obviously we're encouraging everyone to, you know, get on board with this and uh, I can see it as a bit of a benefit both ways. I think it will increase the efficiency of the sample scan, having all the right information delivered right from the word go. Um, basically, uh, there's a multitude of ways... You can receive it. Uh, you can, uh, it has been sent out various times, I believe, via email. Uh, you can go on our website as well to download it. Uh, we will have copies on site as well. If people do, for some reason, you don't have it prior to their arriving, trust me, we're not going to turn anyone away because they don't have it. Uh, we will have uh, booklets there that we can hand out. But from my point of view and how I see it, uh, you know, if I was a grower, there's a lot of information that could probably be pre-populated to one, speed up the process, make it easier for the truck driver um, so they're not uh, having to fill it out uh, all the time. So things like your NGR card number, your trading name, uh, contact name, uh, the truck rego if you're only using the one truck or you might have two trucks and things like that, it, it probably makes sense to pre-populate that uh, and have it ready. So really all they might be changing is the, the commodity or um, something like that or maybe the cust um, yeah, things like that. So very, very minimal sort of changes um, is, is what's required. So there are, if you have any issues or can't seem to find it on our website, you know, please phone our, our 1800 Grains number uh, where our grower services team will more than happy to, uh, you know, send you out uh, the, 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 the Word document so you can print them off and pre-populate. Uh, but as I said, we will have copies on site as well uh, to assist with growers coming in. Lovely. Thanks for that update. Now, Craig, I noticed we've just shown the grower delivery advice up there on the screen, and I noticed that there's a question in there about in-crop glyphosate for barley and durum. Can you please elaborate on this, and what is the grower meant to be declaring in that question? So, is it, yeah, we just need to know what has been put onto the crop. Obviously, when these, um, these cereals go out to, uh, when we export them, um, there are customers that need to know what's been on it. Um, it actually does limit what markets it can go to. So we really do need to know what has been put onto those crops uh, in in the season. Perfect. Thanks for that, Craig. Um, there's another question that's come in from the audience here, Tony, and they're just wondering how does a grower, given we're going contactless, how does a grower request a retest? Yeah, thanks, Izzy. So... The grower or their representative will proceed up to the sample stand um, where they'll drop their um, delivery advice form into the bucket. Um, our competent staff then will um, go through the process of sampling the truck. 
um, yeah, we'll, we'll go through all them procedures. We'll get the um, the result. Um, if there is a you know, a query or they're not happy with that um, result, they um, just advise us that they'd like to have a retest. This day and age, uh, Croptomizer takes a lot of that um, variance out of it, but they are also yeah, they're quite happy to willing to have a second test. So we'll do the second test. Um, predominantly, it'll be out of the bucket because um, the truck's probably already moved forward. Um, so we'll do the test again. And, um, yeah, the second test um, results stand as that over the first one. Um, if they're still not happy and they want another test, well, that's, yeah, if the queue's very long, well, they're going to have to go out and, and go back around and, and get join the queue again. Otherwise, if there's no one in the line, yeah, they just go back around and straight back into the stand. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Perfect. Thanks for that, Tony. Now, just remember, we do have that uh, chat feature on the on this webinar, so feel free to continue to send these questions across. Phil, I've had a question come in here from Grant, and Grant's question is about if we're going contactless, how does a grower sell their grain on the way bridge? Yeah, thanks, Izzy. Uh, good evening, all. As um, Warwick alluded to before, everything as part of COVID will be placed into, into Warehouse this year, and our Crop Connect platform it can just be utilised just to complete all transactions. Um, there's a number of functions on there. You'll be able to see where your truck is on site, your load details, um, use it as a stock management tool, cash loads, contract management. Um, there's also accounting features on there. You can get your RCTIs, RCTIs or, or delivery summaries. Um, load quality details, if you set up the notifications, uh, they can be sent through every time to your phone as the truck's leaving site. Um, Crop Connect is dead set, your one-stop shop. Um, and I just can't emphasise enough just to suggest, you know, get on there, uh, have a look, get it set before harvest. Any issues, just contact 1-800-GRAINS. Um, you will get the guys in Wagga. Um, there's three permanent staff here and up to 20 casuals this harvest that will be servicing from Dubbo South down there. So any issues, please don't hesitate to just get on there, have a look and call, call the guys in, in Wagga. Thanks, Phil. You mentioned there that everything delivered into the Grain Corp network will automatically be placed in warehouse. Can you give us an update or some insight into what costs are involved in doing this and also any other benefits that the growers may receive from putting grain into warehouses harvest? Yeah, so there's two things there. Um, you know, there's no, no uh, cost to Crop Connect, whether you set a target price to use Crop Connect, there's nothing. Um, the only cost is with your warehousing fees, which is if you decide to sell after the grace period, which is your month of delivery plus two months. Um, the, the main benefit of, of Crop Connect is, is the ability to, to use Croptimizer, which is our, it's, a, it's basically a quality, for those that don't know, a quality upgrade program applicable to wheat and barley. Um, you'll need to meet three specific criteria uh, to be eligible for this. They are, you meet certain parameters around protein and screenings. Um, you need to have grower equity. What's that mean? You need to have delivered the higher grade uh, prior to, to being eligible. And then it also comes down to the stack position at site. Um, you will receive a text message uh, from, the, from the, the guys in Wagga um, to notify you of eligible loads. Once you get that text, just call that 1-800-GRAINS and it'll all be done. Thanks, Phil. It sounds like there's plenty of benefits from placing your grain into warehouses harvest. Craig, it sounds like we're ready to receive this grain in upcountry sites. Can you give us an update on how the business has been getting ready for the export task that's on the East Coast? Definitely is. And we're, look, we're very lucky that our shipping stem has been well supported um, by the marketers. Uh, so I was actually in Port Kembla today and the team down there are very excited about having the supply chain operate what they call the right way. Um, so we'll see some export grain come out. Um, so we're down there currently, they're working on their detailed cleaning of the bins and the flow paths. Um, but they're also working on giving the shiploaders a bit of a birthday because we really haven't used them in a couple of years. On top of that, they're actually doing similar to our upcountry. Um, we are adding the labour into the, the team and training them up to make sure that we're in place and ready to roll for the big export season that's coming. 
Thanks, Craig. I'm pleased to hear that even our gear gets a birthday every now and again. Phil, with the large export year plan that Craig was just speaking of, what options do growers have to deliver direct to port or into up country sites post harvest? Yeah, thanks, Is There is, um, yeah, there's two options basically that we're, that we're offering this year, and that's to, straight to port, um, which can either be into Port Kembla or, or Newcastle, Geelong, um, or we're looking at a post harvest uh, delivered to, uh, to site. Um, Red Bend has been mentioned at the moment, and it's yet to be confirmed, but um, once we've got that, um, we will certainly get that out there and we'll, we'll let you know what our, our prices are um, and, and how that will work. Uh, just please note that it will be two-day payments, um, which is something that worked really well down in Victoria last year with a delivered port program. Uh, yeah, so we're pretty excited. But if, if you don't get our pricing, please don't hesitate to contact me and um, we'll get you on that on that list. Very good. I'm also interested, Phil, to understand more about the canola sustainability changes and what's been happening in that space. Yeah, a bit happening here, Hizzy. Um, it, it's a real topic of conversation. Um, seven of the major exporters um, and the NGR have come together uh, to make the uh, canola sustainability process easier for all parties involved. Uh, the general guidelines uh, of the program are similar to the previous years. Uh, you as the grower complete one form now with NGR and that covers the seven exporters as part of the program. If you are growing canola, um, I just suggest contact NGR, get information on it and, and complete the declaration. Our prices are paid at a premium for sustainable grain, so we do offer discounts, but if you need any of that, um, please just contact us. But, yeah, have a chat to NGR and it's, um, yeah, shouldn't be any issues. Thanks, Phil. We've had a question come in from the audience. This question's come in from Neil. He's wondering whether or not there's any online training videos or pre-harvest schools for Crop Connect. Are you able to answer that, please, Phil? Yeah, certainly can. Um, we do have uh, some, there's some great YouTube videos um, out there on Crop Connect and how to use it, simple things like how to set yourself a target price, um, which is something that's worked really well in the last few years. Some data saying that our growers are averaging $4 better um, to, to set yourself a target price. You can also select those buyers is another, um, another offering. Back to your sort of question, sorry, Neil. Yes, we do have that. It's on YouTube. If you don't or can't help you, call the, call the guys in the Wagga office and they've got a, a, a lot of information that they can go through, get you set up and show you how to, how to operate it. Thanks for that question, Neil. It was a great one. Phil, I've heard a number of times throughout the last half an hour on this webinar, 1800 grains. Can you please give me an overview of where this is located and who is who's there ready to take our grower customers' phone calls come, come harvest time and ensure that we're providing exceptional customer service? Yeah, no worries. I, I quickly alluded to it before. The 1800 numbers, um, 1800 grains is you're getting uh, guys and girls straight in Wagga. Um, there's going to be a team of over 20 people here uh, made up of uni students and, and everyone. Um, they're, they're here to, to service any needs if you've got anything, if you've got eligible loads to, to crop connect. It's, it's really exciting that you're going to be talking to someone in the country, um, most likely from the country. And uh, so that's Dubbo South in Wagga. Uh, and, and for those sort of north of Dubbo, they'll be they'll be put through to Tamworth, where the other northern northern is based, northern region office is based. So, yeah. Very good. Thanks, Phil. Now I've had another question come in from the audience. This again is from from Neil. It's great to see that there are two bunkers of canola at Red Bend site. What happens if and when they fill? I think Tony would be best positioned to answer this question for us. Yeah, thanks, Tiz. Yeah, so Neil, um, we are, are running the two two bunkers this year, so we've got a possible of uh, 38,000 ton combined there. Um, we also have um, the possibility of rail overflow of up to five to six k. So uh, if that did um, come into play, yeah, we'll 
we'll make the um, necessary arrangements to put some on rail to either MSN or, or we'll get that down to port. But, um, yeah, just looking at the, the previous years, um, yeah, we normally pull it up around 25 to 26,000, so that's why we've gone with the extra two bunkers this year. So, you know, if we're looking at 38, well, hopefully we'll hold it pretty comfortably. Very good. Thanks for that question, Neil. Now, Craig, we've covered off a large array of topics though, in a very, very short space of time. I'm just wondering if you can just please provide a recap of those key messages. No worries at all, Izzy. I think the, the key messages that I took from the session are the major change for this harvest with our COVID plan is that our sites will be contactless. Um, the delivery advice forms are required for both samples and deliveries. Um, and that all grain will be automatically placed in warehouse. You can then utilise your Crop Connect to complete transfers to contract, cash or pools as well, um, as well as place offers, uh, view invoices and manage your notifications. Um, I would also suggest that you check your personal details with NGR prior to harvest and complete the Canola Sustainability Declaration if you wish. Over to you, Is, and I wish everyone all the best for harvest. Thanks, Craig. I'll just go around, around the grounds now. Oh, sorry, before we do that, we've got one, a couple more questions that have come in. So this one's come from Nick. Are the delivery advice forms available as an interactive form rather than just PDF? I'll throw this across to yourself, Warwick. Yeah, thanks, Izzy. Um, look, I believe so. I, I could be wrong. Izzy, do, have we got it in a Word document that we, they can pre-populate? That's what I've been instructed we can do. So, um, yeah, if uh, that, that can be supplied, Nick, that, yeah, you can pre-populate it. As I said, you might want to put, there's probably 80% of the information probably doesn't change that much. So, uh, make it more efficient for the growers, more efficient for us as well. So, um, yeah, once again, I'll encourage you if you want that um, format to, uh, yeah, get in contact with either myself or Tony or the 1800 Grains team at our Grow Services team and we'll certainly can uh, help you with that. Yeah, that's correct, Was So if you jump onto our website, Nick, you'll find both a editable version of the PDF, but you'll also find a Word document there. Or if you have any questions, feel free to ring 1800 Grains or email growers at graincorp.com.au and the team here in Wagga will be able to provide you with the details and we can help you pre-populate them as well if that's easier. I've got another question coming in from the audience and it's in regards to PPE and high vis that's required for truck drivers um, this harvest. So the questions come from Morris. What are the site requirements for high vis and PPE for truck drivers this harvest? So I think I might throw that across to Tony. Yeah, thanks, Is. Uh, so, yeah, Morris, um, coming into the Grain Corp site this year, um, hard hats are no longer applied on, on um, yeah, visitors, so you won't need a hard hat, but you will need, um, yeah, uh, ankle high, sort of very sturdy boots. You'll need a um, high vis vest. Um, yeah, if you're in dust and that, like you'll be out of the truck just to open your tailgate and things like that, you know, feel free to put some glasses on and things like that. But yeah, you're mainly looking at boots and a bit of high vis. Yeah, the two um, starting point for sites. Very good. Very good. Thanks, Tony. And don't don't forget to slip, slop, slap there, Morris, just to um, stay out of the the Aussie sun once it starts to warm up. So that brings us to the end of our end of our questions. So I'm just going to go around the grounds and just get the final thoughts from the team prior to um prior to wrapping this webinar up. So I think I'll throw you across to Warwick first. For your final yeah, thoughts, if you great. had any there. Yeah, all good. Thanks, Izzy. Look, first, uh, I just want to wish all the growers online and obviously all the growers in the, the parks cluster um, all the very best, a very safe harvest. And obviously we'll be doing everything we possibly can at Grain Corp to make it as uh, efficient as possible. We know it's going to be a big year. We know turnaround times are important. So we'll be doing everything we can to do that. Um, but, yeah, look, my, my passing probably comment will be, you know, just if you do have issues or you, you you know that something could help us improve, please keep in contact with your local site manager. Um, very hard for us to help you if we, we don't know any, we're unaware of the problem. Um, so, yeah, please get to know your site manager and, uh, you know, funnel all your information through to them and we'll do, uh, we'll work together to achieve a, a successful and safe harvest. So, thank you. Thanks for that, Was. I'll now throw across to Tony. 
Yeah, thanks, Chris. Yeah, so after three very challenging years up this play in the parks cluster, it'll be great to see all the growers, um, yeah, really um, looking forward to seeing come back into sight and, and delivering the grain back into our system. Um, the area looks really great from uh, Karakabal right up to parks at this at this point. So, yeah, very excited with the, um, yeah, the forecast we've sort of predicted. Um, wish everyone a safe harvest. I know it's going to be very busy if we have any incidents or or issues that you feel that need to be addressed, yeah, by all means, give me a call straight away or your local site manager. They're the first point of call and then, um, yeah, any issues will resolve as quick as we can. Thank you. Thanks, Tony. And last but not least, but I'll get the final thoughts from Phil. Yeah, thanks, Izzy. Um, yeah, I'm pretty pumped. I'm uh, really looking forward to to buying some grain off you guys uh, rather than selling it, which is what uh, we've reversed the, the supply chain to what it's done. There was a big program of free on truck barley out of parks that we've ran sort of last uh, mid last year, which was uh, pretty stressful for you all. So I'm, I'm really excited. Um, yeah, sing out if there's any issues, have a chat to your site manager and um, yeah, don't ever hesitate to es escalate anything to, to them or myself uh, with pricing and yeah, have a safe one and happy days. Thanks, Phil. We have heard you, you've been, we've mentioned a few times about site managers. If you don't have the contact details for your local site, please contact 1800 Grains and they'll provide you with the um, staff member and their details on who to contact come harvest time. Now that concludes our webinar for this evening. Hopefully this session has provided you with the knowledge of what Grain Corp is doing this harvest to ensure you, your community and our staff remain safe. I thank you again for your time this evening and I wish you all a very safe harvest.